composition, framing, and cropping. Essentially, it's all the same thing. The way that we perceive images, the way we look at images. Something that we talked about earlier today. Now, right. The learning outcome. Critically evaluate the framing decisions of your own and others' images and be able to engage with and respond positively to the process of critique and creative direction. It's a lot of words, isn't it? An awful lot of words. Critically evaluate the framing decisions of your own and other images, of others' images, and be able to engage with and respond positively to the process of critique and creative direction. Anybody want to take a guess at what I'm talking about? Critically evaluate. Well, earlier today we talked about compositional attributes. Does anybody remember any of what those were, for example? I showed you some pictures from a book that I was inspired by, pictures on a page, and we looked at some compositional attributes. Does anybody remember what they were? Or can you suggest something? Diagonals, absolutely. Using diagonals to give the sense of movement. There are others. Does anybody know any others off the top of their head? Quickly. Which one is the space for text? Yes, well, it's, yes, absolutely. And that's always worth taking into account as well. Frames within frames, picture putting frames around things. So, critically evaluate the frame decisions of your own images and other people's. So, we've talked about being able to uh, look at other people's work and look at what works for their images. For example, Cartier Bresson and Bill Brandt construction of their images. So we want to look at that and we want to be able to apply it to our own photographs that we take and respond positively to the process of critique and creative direction. Why do you think that's relevant? Responding well to feedback. And yeah, exactly. Responding well to feedback. Because the reality of all of you is that you're going to work in a commercial world. okay? And what you're going to have to get used to is cooperation like for me. So you have to be able to respect other people's opinions, other creative people, and, and be able to work with their input. Yeah? So, be able to, the process of critique and creative direction. Alright? So, take on board what other people say, and be able to translate it into your own work. So that's what I'm hoping from this 20 minutes this morning, that you're going to get out of this session. Many of your photograph is ruined because the photographer hasn't seen selective, selectively, failing to register the awkward background or confusion of detail that spoils his or hers emotional vision. Lots of things here to think about. I can give you a hard copy version of some of these quotes as well if you want to refer back to them. Okay? This one is from a chap called Harold Evans who wrote the book that we looked at earlier on, Pictures on a Page. Okay? Discuss the implications of this statement. Does anybody want to have a pick, a poke at this? Many a photograph is ruined because the photographer hasn't seen selectively. What do you think that means? Anybody want to have a Yeah, you're tempted. Come on. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Backgrounds, confusing backgrounds. Yeah. Yes. That's basically what we're talking about. It's snapping away. It's a lot of old, you know, a lot of Theorising is a lot of words to say something quite simple. Basically what that's saying is happy snaps. Stop taking happy snaps. Alright? Okay? Failing to register the awkward background or confusion of detail that spoils his or hers emotional vision. It sounds great, doesn't it? But we are emotional vision. It's a great term, that, actually. Right? The feeling, the reason why we're taking a photograph is image makers, it's, uh, you know, it's people that take photographs, we're motivated take a photograph. Does anybody, does anybody here feel that sense of motivation? There's certain areas or genres that you all work in. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You work in fashion, you work in fashion, don't you? Yes? So, your emotional vision, right? So it's about the preconception of things, all right? I know they're quite complicated terms, but if you digest what the message is behind these, it will help you with your work, all right? We've looked at this picture before. Okay? But if we think about emotional, does this conjure up an emotional vision to you as a preconceived image? Do you think so? Would you say so? Do you think that the photographer, before he took this picture, was involved with these people? No. No? You think it was purely an observation? Yeah, I just think it's people in the street who spotted them. Right. Okay. And, and, his, and his vision for the image as a whole?
similar and then re reconstructed it. <coughs> Good, you're all right. There's no wrong here. What there is, is you thinking and looking at this and analysing it. That's a great move forward. They're all good suggestions. Spontaneity, absolutely. It was a candid moment. Yes? Your comments, what were you saying about? He's kind of like, he's obviously watched them and kind of saw... Like, okay, the moment. Like he's interacting. Yeah. He's considered the composition, that's yeah. what you were saying. Great. You're beginning, like already, from what I talked about earlier today, and what we're talking about now, you're beginning to right, think about this now, aren't you? Right? You're beginning. The wheels are turning. I can see. They're cranking up. Yes, they are. A cup of coffee and a bit of fresh air. Yes. This whole business about right, framing your images, considering them, looking at them. Okay? So, Henry Cartier-Bresson. Henry Cartier-Bresson believed that the good photograph became meaningless if cropped. So he's talking about post-production. What he's saying is that if you don't take the photograph, uh, visualise it and take it as a single image, right, you're being uh, untrue to your art, essentially. Okay? Like, it's a bit of a severe attitude, all right? but it just shows how important it was to him as one of the formative image makers of the 20th century, the 21st century now, yes, that the single image, he framed it, he took it, and he took the photograph as one image. Okay? He also went on to say that cropping under the enlarger cannot, in his mind, make up for a, lot, uh, for a lack of formal rigour when shooting. So, what exactly that's what he's saying, is that if you need to crop it afterwards, you didn't take enough time to shoot it in the first place. Today, from what you will leave today with, hopefully, is that I have totally underlined this point about preconception and framing. Okay? I hope this point I'm going to make sure this video is recording. Sorry. It appears so. <coughs> it would be quite delicate to go back to this again. But... Right. Bill Brandt. We talked about Bill Brandt. Yes? Um, again, I said to you earlier on that for me he was a major source of inspiration. And that was because of his preconception and his ability to preconceive and construct images in the camera. Okay? So, in a circumstance like this, this is just you know, simply, uh, you know, one roll of film, a couple of frames. I mean, it may have even been, literally, well, I don't know that he was shooting on 5.4, I think Bill Brent used to shoot on 2 and a 4 to medium format. But you imagine what it was like when you did have to shoot on 5.4 for these type of portraits. So you had, like, one frame one side of the slide, taken out of two frames. Yes, it's a concept that, you know, you do not have the luxury of using multiple exposures, except, for, you know, lots of exposures, okay? So again, the framing, the concept of framing. Now, Bill Brandt, okay, I have to bring it into it as an influence on me, right? Complained of the students of the Royal College of Art that their photos were weak and unedited, okay? The Royal College of Art, I mean, by the general standards, that's pretty high up, okay? They're like, you know, that's the place to aspire to, Royal College of Art, and the College of Printing, places like that, you know? But he wasn't happy with what they were doing, okay? Absolutely. Bill Brandt cropped and edited all his own pictures in the dark room. And he had the opinion that Rembrandt and Picasso, they were able to repaint. So why should the photographer not be able to, as a creative artist, deny the opportunity to improve their work? So I'm just trying to demonstrate to you here two sides of the argument, okay, obviously, but the same argument, of Cartier-Bresson, who felt if you uh, didn't frame the picture properly in the first instance, then it was, you know, it was... Uh, you, were, uh, you were denying your art, and on the second hand, Bill, Bra Bill Brandt, who believed that it was reasonable to go back and re-edit a photograph in order to prove the composition. Okay? Right, underlining this again. Discuss. Does anybody want to talk about this or any opinions? Or are you just happy to absorb this information? Yes? Okay, it's making sense? Good. All right. You don't take a photograph, you make it. Who said that? And there's a clue there. Lovely. Thank you. Ants Lanyons. Absolutely. Yes. And that was what he believed. That was what he said. Each year he took 12 significant photographs. 
It's not that many, is it, really, for somebody who's working professionally? I'd say the same about myself. I would actually say, relatively speaking. I mean, certainly, it's not in triple figures, it's not 100. I'd probably take, definitely under 100. I'd probably take less than 50. Probably between 20 and 50 substantial photographs a year. Okay? Quality, not quantity. That is the message again. Yes? Okay. And some Adams. Great landscape photographer. Now then, somebody is going to tell me in the class here about the compositional attributes of that photograph because it's fairly obvious as a landscape photograph. Who's going to be the person who's going to do that? What is the obvious compositional attribute of that picture? <coughs> the meandering river. The meandering river. Why is that? Anybody else? It leads you into the image. Thank you. Two <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the same time. Equal. Well done. Exactly that. Okay. You know, it's considered, right? He has positioned himself on his five foot camera with one, possibly two frames, right? So he spent all day and all, all the, probably the previous day walking around, finding where the composition worked, and where he could get to the right angle to literally position the river. So it took him through the picture. It's a very basic compositional attribute, absolutely. I worked with a, uh, when, when, I, when I say, somebody asked me a little about being assistant, I did help actually a little bit one or two times. There was a photographer I worked with who taught me a really good lesson. We were working on a, uh, doing something for daylight one day and we spent the whole day uh, literally waiting for the light. We sat in chairs the whole day long watching the light because it was important to him in the landscape because he was taking landscape photographs when the light fell. And that was a great lesson to me when I was in my 20s. So you've got to be patient, absolutely. And again, all day long, camera, five frames, go home. Because it was about preconception, the vision, the framing. Okay? Ansel Adams, the meandering river, a compositional attribute, framing, diagonals, things that take you into the picture. Best friends for composition. Here is one of them. Why is that one of the best trends for composition? Because you don't have to hold your camera, you can, you can just kind of leave it there and just keep checking and combine everything and set it all up in frame, ready to go. <laughs> Understand that, yeah. Exactly, that's basically it. Because what that does is it puts you put the camera on the back there, right, okay, and now you can look through the camera, okay. Earlier on you saw me setting up the video camera, okay, and what was I doing? I was positioning, making sure that the balance of the frame was good, there's no great big blobs of white and things like that. Okay, exactly the same thing. If I put it on there, I can go backwards and forwards, go backwards and forwards. The other best friend, frame grid. You know what that is, don't you? Emma? Yes? Yeah. What's um, a frame grid? Is it on when you look through the lens? It's got all the screens. Squares on the back. Why do you think that helps you? Carry on. Um, because the rule of thirds is a good like composition technique for photography. <coughs> like, your eyes Perfect. The tripod locked off and the frame grid on the back will help you to balance the component parts in the frame. I mean, still life is a good exercise to do it with because it's not so easy with people keep moving them about things like that. So I told you earlier on when I did my college course and I did a still life. Um, I got all loads of component parts and things like that because that's what I was doing, you know, making up a really nice frame and putting things. Still, actually, no matter, regardless of what type of photography ultimately you want to specialise in, you know, these are just good exercises in basic composition, okay? So even though you want to be a fashion photographer, you're sitting there going, oh, I'm going to do this. You know what? Honestly, get a still life together and have a play. Have a play with the composition parts and have a play with the lighting. You know, it actually becomes quite exciting, quite interesting. To a point. If you're not interested in it. But you know, there is a, absolutely it is. And you really will learn something from it. Absolutely. Good old tripod and the frame grid. Consider the composition, work on large format. Yes, do a still life. They're all very, very good exercises in working for your composition, your framing, and your cropping. Right? And the landscape is more about positioning yourself on the camera. So like he put himself up a mountain with the river running through it. You can't move the mountain or the river, so you have Alright? Okay? Alright? Best friends of composition are... Tripod and grid. Yes, well done. Okay, good. Appli 
application. Okay, now I'm talking about why, why we're doing it. Cropping for composition. Yes, well that's fairly obvious, absolutely, to make our composition. How can we improve our composition? We, again, this is something I've been you know, touching at all day long. How, do we, how can we improve our composition? What do I keep doing? Don't have everything in the centre. Pardon? Don't have everything in the centre. Yeah, okay, but let's widen up the argument a bit more. How can we improve our composition as far as what we're, we're thinking about? Yeah, all these are good things. I'm thinking a bit wider. Okay. Referencing other people. Okay. Look at other people's work. Sorry, there wasn't a lot of clues there. It was a bit too specific. But thank you. You were thinking. Uh, for sure. So, you know, like I keep on about Bill Brand, Cartier, Bresson, all these other people. Honestly, really. Go to the library. Go and get these books out. You know, I mean, okay, you can go online. I know, right? And it's easy to research online. It is. Absolutely. But there's nothing better than having a tangible book in front of you and looking at the actual book itself, you know? Really, do go and get some of the books out of the library and enjoy the quality of the prints. Because obviously the screens, and you do concentrate more, absolutely. All right? And our exhibitions, yes, you know, if there's exhibitions in Plymouth places like that, do go and look at them. Look at these people's work, the painters, and people, and look at the way they position things in the brain. Still lives and things like that, etc. Cropping for impact application. Well, that's to do with working like newspapers and magazines, doing tight crops and things like that. Framing for application, okay, that is to do with allowing for graphics and so on to be put onto a frame, considering page layouts, okay. So, different applications and different things you're doing. Composition, magazines, etc. Layouts and grids, and graphics, sorry. Okay, case in point, alright. Alright. This is a photograph that I've taken where I've been thinking about the fact it could be used as a single marketing image. Okay? So I've positioned them in the frame, and what have I done if the type's not there? Pardon? You just left the frame. I left the space. As simple as that. Because there's nothing worse. If you come in tight like that, you've completely done them as far as the graphics people are concerned. Okay? All right? And a situation like this. Right, make sure that you give them various sizes, okay? She's still the important subject of the frame, right? So you can get too far back and it's all about the trees and the house in the background. Pardon? Yeah, well they've obviously put an effect on some of the ones in the back and stuff. Um, but, uh, yes, so important to remember framing like with the graphics and so on, okay? In camera composition, you can't beat it. Right. This is what we're trying, ultimately, this is what we're aiming for, okay? You can crop, you can do things post-production, you can do lots and lots of different things. But one day, what I want you all to be able to do is to take a picture like that, which is conceived and shot without any alterations or any cropping. You framed and cropped it in the camera. That is the moment, that's the, what we're aiming for. Because in my professional context, context I need to be doing that day in, day out, 100, 200 times a day, you know, absolutely. Framing in-camera composition. Again, another photograph that we have discussed and talked about, the preconception, the practicing for it, okay, and putting, uh, making it actually happen uh, in-camera composition, right? Preconception of the framed image, okay? Right, quick fire, good crop, Bad crop, okay? Yes. So, you can tell me, you can talk out as well about whether or not you think they're good crops or bad crops. Good crop, bad crop. Go on. This looks bad. Pardon? It's bad. Okay. Yeah. There's too much distracting stuff in the foreground and not centralised on. Okay. Anybody else? It's good discussion. Debate. Depends what it's for. Yeah. Too much distraction. Come on, anything else? I like Do you like it? it? Do you like it? I like it, it if I had a guy in the orange coat. Mm. Yeah. If he wasn't there, it kind of looked so bad. It's completely given to the actor, I think, as well. It's drawing you into the image. Drawing you into the image, yeah. It's not very definitive. It's not hard. It's not an easy one to say. It's, oh, it's tricky, isn't it, that one? Yeah. Mm. Okay. But you know what it's doing? It's creating debate. You're thinking about it. You're talking about it. Yes? Alright? It's the same thing as you need to apply to your own images. Okay? Okay? 
So we're not decided. It's 50-50 that one. We'll go for a half and half, shall we? Good crop, bad crop? Okay. Oh, it needed a decision. Why? Tricky. 
question. It's a difficult one to decide. Right. Composition, framing, and cropping. Do you think you are now all more knowledgeable about yeah. composition? Are you thinking about it? I don't need to, you actually don't need to ask the question because I know you are. Because in this session now, you've really interacted with me and you've really given me feedback about the things that you're seeing in images, and I definitely think you're thinking about it. Thank you very much. Pleasure.